Bye-bye. All right. This is Mike Bascom. I have with us today Joanne and Tom Curtin, real estate professionals that I've known for quite some time. Welcome, Tom and Joanne. Glad to have you join us. Thanks, Mike. Thanks for having us. Thank you so much. So this is our Ask an Expert Corner, and uh, I've met you guys quite a few years ago. I won't divulge how long, so we don't guess ages. But Tom, you at the time, I think, had just started, you'd shift from marketing, you had a mortgage broker background, and you were into uh, selling real estate. And Joanne, I think you'd been a teacher, and you'd shifted over, and you were just a new agent, and you guys have done fabulously since then as a team selling a lot of real estate, helping a lot of investors, and also building a real estate team. Mm -hmm. As I understand it, you guys have won some pretty significant awards as being uh, one of the best, uh, building one of the best real estate teams that there is here in the Southeast. Yeah. So congratulations to yeah. you. And thank, thanks. thanks for being online with us today. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. yeah, we're happy to be here. Yeah, Joanne and I have now worked together for uh, over 20 years. So that's <laughs> that right there. You know, we should get an award for that. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> and we're still married. <laughs> I think, yep, I think working together. I mean, we've been asked to travel across the country to speak about owning a business as a couple. I mean, that's yes. already just a real success. So. That's a whole different. Whole different thing. <laughs> Glad to see that you've stayed married during that whole time. Not everyone can do it. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's been interesting to me to see you combine your your unique strengths. You know, Joanne, just your bubbly personality, your willingness to get out there, your uh, insightful eye when you're looking at real estate and the artistic side of it and being able to see value there. And Tom, your expertise, crunching numbers and, and marketing, and you guys meld those two together. What a great team you guys we call it rocket fuel. Thank you. <laughs> you, love, you, love. you guys are great there. So we have a few questions I'd like to ask you. We have many clients who are in the position of owning real estate. They may want to sell it at some time. We also have many clients who purchase real estate. And I thought, who better to ask than people that I know who are true experts in the sale of residential property, especially high-end residential real estate. So thanks for joining us today. Well, thank you. All right, we'll have a few questions for you. The first one is we are in October, so we've just come through a time of historically low interest rates, and now we're starting to zoom up and we're starting to hit high interest rates or higher interest rates. Mm -hmm. So what is the secret to selling real estate in these high interest rate environments? Mm -hmm. I love this question. Okay. Do you want to well, jump in? Yeah, I'll give the uh, the logical answer. Right? There we go. So there's my side. But well, I think anytime you're buying or selling real estate, you're problem solving, right? So in any interest rate environment, you know, you're trying to solve the seller has an issue. Maybe they want to sell their house, but there might be other things that go along with that. The buyer needs to buy a house. Again, there might be other circumstances that go along with that. And you're just trying to figure out what creates the win-win to bring the buyer and the seller together. Um, and interest rates have popped up. Um, I don't know that we'll ever see stuff in the twos again, maybe, you know, but that was really unusual well, when you look at- The word is a phenomenon. Yeah. I mean, that was a phenomenon. And and, and so- So 7% seven, seven where we are today um, is- historically speaking, kind of in the average, right? We're basically right at the average. Mm -hmm. So um, people buy and sell all the time, different interest yeah. rates. But well, just... and my, my two cents on that is, you know, perspective, like, okay, you know, we deal with clients that are renting. And of course, if you rent a house, you're paying 100% of an interest rate. <laughs> so let's get that in perspective. Mm -hmm. The other aha though, is if you do the math on a 30 year, interest rate paying the rates today. Um, I'm sorry, if you did a if you did the math on um, the phenomenon numbers that we were yeah, used so to at a 30 year mm -hmm. at a 30 year, you can beat that with the numbers if you did a 15 year on today's interest rates. So the oh, way to win would be doing a 15 year and oh by the way, instead of paying once every month, just pay the same amount, but just two times a month. And you can shave off like nine years of that note becoming, you know, completed. So, um, and then my other, my other point was um, the buy down, because if you're selling right now, instead of reducing your price, 
it actually benefits you as the seller to not reduce your price, but yet give a buy down option or buying down the rate for the buyer, because that means over the life of that amortization, that means a lot more money to the buyer if they get a rate down from the seller than if they just come off the price by a few thousand dollars. All right, so some of our clients are seniors and they may not completely understand what you just said about the buy down. Can you break that down in just a little bit? Yeah, simpler? Um, so basically a, as a seller, you can offer to, um, it's, it's kind of like contributing to closing costs, but you're using that money to reduce the um, buyer's interest rate. So they have the ability to, the, the mortgage company will allow you to buy the rate down. So you're paying money up front to lower the interest rate. And it's, you know, just, there's a formula to it, um, but you can, you can buy the rate down 1%, one and a half percent, a half a percent, you know, it's going to obviously cost more the further you buy, buy it down. And it could be anywhere from, you know, 8,000 to, well, it can go yeah, as I mean, high as you want. It can go as high as you want, but it, just to give an example yeah. of how much that could be. So as a seller, it's an incentive to the buyer. You can offer that, like Joanne said, instead of reducing the price, you know, let's put some money towards this to, to lower the buyer's interest rate. There's a permanent buy down, which is the life of the loan. And then there's also, you'll hear a lot now about the 2-1 buy down, which is a temporary reduction. Um, you know, it's reduced a lot in the first year and then it's still reduced, but a little bit less in the second year. And then it goes to the current rate after year two. Um, and that, this, that's a little bit less expensive, mm -hmm. but the theory behind that is interest rates will probably settle down, you know, and not be at this rate. Nobody knows. Right. But, you know, a year and a half from now, they might go down and then you'll just refinance anyway. Mm -hmm. Right. So just so we're clear, this buy down we're talking about does not take place when the initial contract is signed, but the money takes place at the time of closing when the deed transfers. So the seller is just going to take a little bit money, a little bit less money back. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah, just off their net proceeds. Nothing That's has true. to come out of pocket. It's all just done at the closing table. And um, it's it's a marketing you know, communication between the buyer and seller to problem solve this to closing. Mm -hmm. All right. So this is where a savvy real estate agent can help a seller make sure that they're taking advantage of these little tools that are out there. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. So what if you were a buyer? Let's flip it. What if you're a buyer and right now there's not a whole lot of inventory out there. At least there's, there's less inventory now than what there's been recently. Okay. So how do buyers find bargains when supply is low? Yeah. That's a good question. Um, you know, one, one way that we've helped, it, it's been low for a while now. And um, as our real estate team gets out there is we find off market property. So there's a couple of ways that we're able to do that. One is some, like if you identify these neighborhoods that you want, we'll literally call those neighborhoods and door knock those neighborhoods and try to find people who are thinking about selling. And, you know, maybe at this time of the year, they were thinking of selling in the spring, well, hey, let's, you know, what if we were to be able to buy the house now and let you stay till the spring? There's different strategies, right, that you can use for that. Um, and then we also have, just because we've been in the business as long as we have, a pretty substantial database of people that we know that might consider selling their house, but for whatever reason, they just haven't put it on the market yet. So again, it's the shadow inventory, right? That is maybe not out to the public that there's opportunities there. Mm -hmm. um, but you were going to say something. I know. I, was, I, I had, yeah, I had that thought. But <laughs> before, before I was saying, no. it'll, it'll swing back to me. Sorry. But it, was, it was a great strategy. <laughs> it'll come back to me. Um, but that was a big one is trying to, yeah, connect with um, the database. And we call it farming you know, farming the area and finding people um, that, yeah, that are looking to sell. So I'm seeing a new business opportunity here. Some of the people watching this are going to say, hey, can we get on an opt-out list? Would we'll be willing to pay for an opt-out to not be farmed? Do they yeah, have exactly. solicitations to sell their property? Until they're ready to sell, then they're going to want to be back on it again. <laughs> It'll be three. Yeah, keep those flyers, right? That's that's mm -hmm. awesome. All right, so let's talk about sellers for a second. Uh, what's the biggest mistake that sellers make that they could avoid? 
if they I mean I think it's lack of preparation um you know like <clears throat> there if you take the time up front to prepare the house like if we could ma wave the magic wand and mm -hmm. say follow this formula trust us right and the people that listen to that they get the most money with the least amount of hassle really but it's it is there is preparation that can be done to maximize um, and sometimes it's not elaborate. You know, I think people get scared of scared of that, but just following, we, we have a home person who specifically just does that. They go in and they say, this is what needs to be done to the house, right? They don't, you don't have to do all this stuff, but if you want to get the most amount of money, here's the recommendation list. Mm -hmm. And if they take the time to, to do that recommended list mm -hmm. and prepare it, um, then they end up... Yeah in the best position. Yeah, we had a trustee actually that did that. He said, this is what I'm looking for. He was a great trustee, right, for the family. I mean, he just really did it right and, and consulted on all the options. And he said, well, before we renovate, let's go ahead and, you know, see if we can sell it. That would be, a, you know, that would be great. And it happened, I think, April of last year. And boy, you know, he didn't have to do anything. He pretty much just called his number and then there, there right. we went. Um, but, so, but now I'd say we're back in more yeah. of a, a normal, a normalized market, which means, you know, you can't just stick, okay. a, stick a sign in the yard and get 50 offers. Like doing the prep work up front mm -hmm. is going to bring you the most amount of money. Well, and I like to just say in easy terms, like we can't just sell an ugly house anymore. Not that that was an ugly house, <laughs> but I sold some ugly houses. Oh, yeah. did not need a thing and they got taught to be top dollar. So you can't do, you can't sell the ugly house now. It has to be competing in the beauty pageant. It's a beauty pageant again. Yeah. Um, another thing I was going to mention about a, a mistake or a pitfall is, you know, to be analysis paralysis. Mm -hmm. So it's the flip side. Um, you know, someone that's just like, I think I know more than you or I'm going to make sure I try to find out more than you and, and slow it down because, you know, time can be money in real estate and we just don't need to delay and overanalyzing things. Um, we just need to, we, you need to trust who you're hiring to advise you. Yeah, right. Right. So your most successful sellers, are you seeing any particular characteristics that they have or things that they're doing to make sure that they're, the most successful yeah i mean i think it's trusting the plan you know like like i said there's going to be a list of things to do to maximize the value and just trusting in that that the money that you're spending you know we're we're acting as a fiduciary so we're not advising you to spend money that you're not going to get that a return on that money um and and there's has to be a trust level there right so you know whether it's paint or flooring or, you know, just depends on what that specific house needs. But if we're recommending that be done, there has to be a trust that, okay, this is money that I should spend and effort I should make to do it. Mm -hmm. So those, those are the most successful when they follow the plan that we lay out. Mm -hmm. It's predictable and we do it all the time. So mm -hmm. yeah. Very good. Let's look that. Let's look at the buyer's side. So what's the biggest mistake that buyers need to avoid right now? Mm -hmm. Ooh, well, they've already found out that they, their mistake was, you know, not buying when the rates were low. Now they're wishing that they had go ahead and, you know, jumped off the fence then. Yeah, I, I think the biggest mistake that I've seen is when, um, and again, this is where, you know, whoever your agent is should, should be advising you on this, but when you're not looking at the resale side of things, so you know, buying a super unique property because you just fell in love with it, but the resale is going to be really difficult. Um, you know, that, that, that's a mistake in my mind when you're just not thinking through like mm -hmm. the issues that the reason that this house potentially hasn't sold and that you're able to get such a quote deal on it might be the, the sellability of it that you're going to face down the road that if you can't correct that, you know, like mm -hmm. there's some things that are correctable, then maybe that is an opportunity. But if it's something that you cannot correct, um, you know, like a location or there's a gigantic power line running through the backyard, something like that, that's going to affect 
mm -hmm. the ability to resell it, that's mm -hmm. a that's a mistake, right? Mm -hmm. That yeah. you need to functional yeah. obsolescence. There's a big word for that in real estate. Think through that. Yeah. Um, I thought about my strategy back to since you were asking about buyers. Yes. So yeah. bargains with a buyer, some of the best bargains mm -hmm. as a buyer can come from relationships. Okay. So I know Tom talked about calling the database and all that. What does all of that mean? That's eerie theory. Well, it, it means a lot because there's a relationship there, right? Like mm -hmm. They, they trust the relationship we have, but also um, a buyer has relationships as well with people that, you know, that could be an opportunity for them to buy. If they know someone in a neighborhood or there's connections there. I mean, people like to do business with people that they know, love and trust. Mm -hmm. So opportunities for bargains and investors can come from trusted relationships. Mm -hmm. awesome. Very good, that, that's good to remember. And uh, Joanne, I know you're fantastic with networking and helping people explore their network and see where those little tentacles can lead. So that's that's fantastic. I appreciate you sharing that tip there. Uh, let's look at uh, opportunities. I'm going to ask you for both buyers and sellers. What do you see as the biggest opportunities right now for both sellers and for buyers? Well, I, for sellers, I feel like the inventory is still really low. I mean, it's it's rising a little bit, but again, um, historically, inventory is still really low. So right now um, is a is a good time to list. There's less competition than than maybe there will be come spring. Mm -hmm. um, just from a timing perspective. Um, and then I would say the the same kind of holds true on the buy side. There are less buyers in the market because of the interest rate environment and maybe people that have just decided to put things on hold. So there's not as many buyers in the market and, and we're back to, um, we're back to masterminding and property matching again. Yeah, I mean, it's really more matchmaking. Just it's a more than... normal market, right? Yeah. So you're not, you know, for a while, buyers had to just give up. Um, the opportunities are the networks. Yeah. Uh, we, I mean, we're networking more than we ever have. And boy, is that a value. Like people want access. Mm -hmm. So much so that there's a, a, a video series that we'll, I'll be coming out with next year that's giving some people access to learn about the thinking process that's going on with these buyers and sellers when they buy their house. What did they think through? Why did they buy it? What do they value? All, you know, the inside scoop. So the network is, is really the biggest opportunity. People need to be networking and um, just connecting again. I think it's going back to the old, good old days. Like, you know, realtors that were in the market that I interviewed before I got into the market, you know, they would say, oh, I, I, I saw a house, showed the client one house, and then they bought it. Like, that's kind of what's happening these days. Like, oh, I know of a house in that neighborhood. I'll show it to Joe. Mm -hmm. Like, that's kind of how the new world is going to gonna, gonna um, start to be. So it's, again, that relationship. So I think a win for anybody is just knowing someone who would sell. And if you can get in that house first, that's your, the win is actually finding it. Yeah. So when you say bargain, I, bargain, mm, that's kind of a loaded word, but I think just actually finding one is the bargain. I mean, I can't tell you how many texts I get with people wanting to buy, you know, properties that we own. <laughs> I'm on some list and they find out equity numbers and, th and things like that. It's mm -hmm. really just if you know the person personally. Yeah. Well, I know a lot of Wall Street money has been flowing into buying houses that have been bundling up and, and that's sucked out a lot of inventory as well. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's very impersonal at that point. The relationships you're talking about, the networks you're talking about, if a person doesn't have a, a network or relationship, then by hiring a great agent, then they're tapping into that person's right. relationship. Right. And another, another little phenomenon that happened was we call them boomerang buyers. These buyers bought from the COVID you know, chaos. Right. And then we're calling them boomerang buyers because they're bouncing right back out. You know, the norm has been seven, seven years yeah, five, on average, five, to seven, five years. to seven years. Mm -hmm. um, and that was going really longer after the recession. And now, boom, I mean, you know, they're just, they're in the house and then they're just selling the very next year um, because they realize, you know, wow, I, I don't need this big of a house or mm -hmm. I don't know what I was thinking when I moved here, just 
you know, crazy reasons that people are, I call them boomerangs. So there is a term for it now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, someone that maybe bought a year ago, and this is, these are investors as well that might realize they, they don't want this property, right? So it doesn't have to just be a first time or a primary residence. It could be investors too. All right. So if someone has one of those properties they don't want, what's the best way to get out of it? They have to sell, they'll have to sell it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they'll have to sell it. And, um, you know, it's a hit. So one thing I'll, I'll mention, because you mentioned the Wall Street money. So there are a lot of um, companies that advertise to to buy buy the house. And I think people have like an open door or offer pad. There's a bunch of different companies that um, advertise, you know, just call us, we'll buy your house, hassle-free, blah, blah, blah. Um, and I, I think that is a mistake. That's one of the mistakes we see is that somebody will do that thinking oh, I'm just hitting the easy button but they're leaving a lot of equity on the table at the at the end of the day um, they're they're selling the house but there are a lot of fees that people don't realize so they see that top line number of they're going to give me X but the fees and everything we looked at it they mm -hmm. average out to be about 10 percent which from our standpoint that's less than what you know our brokerage fee would be um, and their, their offer is less than it really mm -hmm. needs to be. Mm -hmm. So I think that is a mistake that people turn to those companies to sell their house because they're quote worried about the hassle. Whereas we, we make it, I think just perfectly easy for the person to sell their house and capture as much equity as possible. And when, um, and, and those houses, um, well, you're talking about buy for cash. Yeah, I yeah. guess, you know, they're, yeah. they're, they're advertising, Hey, we'll buy your house for cash or we'll, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, it just leaves a lot of equity uh, on the table for them. Yeah. Well, uh, this is great information. I appreciate you guys sharing. Let me give you a chance to give me one last uh, insider tip or secret that you think people should know. Um, I love what Tom always says, you know, it's like a broken record. Don't wait to buy real estate, buy real, est real estate and wait. Mm -hmm. So I know that you're talking to people, Mike, that do, do need to sell a property or maybe, you know, they've acquired something and yet, or they've acquired assets and then they need to harbor those assets, right? Into real estate. Mm -hmm. And I mean, real estate is just a win, win, I mean, a, not a win, win, but a win, win, win. So it's all about the buy real estate and wait. I mean, it's income producing, um, tax benefits. There's, it's just, I mean, we, we got into the business because we wanted to, you know, grow wealth through real estate and we've, you know, been running it for two, 20 years now. So. Well, I know you guys, okay. I know you guys are successful as agents, but you also uh, own real estate yourself. So you know what it's like to be an investor. And I think you guys have a property management company too, if I'm not correct. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you've seen it from all angles. Uh, Tom, any last tips or insider secret from your perspective? Um, no, I mean, I think that that's great. It's, if you haven't, can, I think investing in real estate for people who haven't done it, it sounds very scary, but that's where, again, finding someone who can hold your hand and help you through it, it's, it makes so much financial sense. It's crazy to not have that as part of your portfolio, especially we've seen, you know, with what, is happening in the stock market um, and all of those things. Real estate is slow to rise and slow to fall, but it's, it is the slow and steady run. The long-term gains um, really trump, well, trump everything. So if you haven't looked into it, um, look into it. That yeah. And I mean, risky, risky to me is putting money with someone who I don't know what, how it works in the stock market or anything that's invested in. Real estate isn't risky when you know everybody lives in a home, they know a town. I mean, that's to me the most less risky investment, which mm -hmm. sometimes is, you know, flipped, flipped around. So, yeah. Yes. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate your expertise. If someone wanted to contact you, what's the best way that they could reach out to you, ask you questions? Or uh, Yeah, so uh, curtainteam.com is our website, and curtain is C-U-R-T-I-N, so no A, curtainteam.com, or they can call us um, here at the office, 678-287-4848. Well, Tom and Joanne, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate your expertise sharing with my clients. I know they're going to find it to be very, very valuable.
And they're, awesome. they're welcome to call, ask any questions, email us. We're here to help. Thanks so much, Mike. Cool. Yeah.